Hi, this is going to be part two of the review on sex hormone pathways, and we're going to go directly to the material on the female menstrual cycle. I know you guys have all uh, gone through this in AMP at some point, but honestly, a lot of times we just memorize it and it doesn't make a lot of sense. So this is going to be very short, and hopefully if you listen to this video, it'll make a little bit more sense to you so that you can understand why we're doing the timing that we're doing when we look at hormonal contraceptives. So the menstrual cycle, you should really look at it as if it has three different cycles, but they're going on simultaneously. You've got the first thing that's happening is up here in the hypothalamus and pituitary. And we talked about that um, in the last lecture where we talked about the hypothalamus releasing GnRH and then the pituitary releasing either FSH or LH. And that was cyclical and it changed during the month with the pulse frequency of GnRH causing first FSH release and then LH release. This whole cycle, the only reason it's there is to control the ovarian cycle. So the second path cycle that we have is that ovarian cycle. Its purpose is to control the uterine cycle and to also cause follicle and egg maturation and ovulation. So it's got several different things that it's doing. So when the FSH got released by the hypothalamus, hypothalamus and pituitary, pathway we got follicle maturation and we got estrogen being produced and then when F when LH came out we got ovulation and we got progesterone and estrogen still being produced and that estrogen and progesterone was there in order to control the uterine cycle. The uterine cycle its whole purpose is to prepare the endometrium of the uterus for the implantation of a fertilized egg. And then if no implantation occurs, to then result in menstrual bleeding to start the whole cycle again. So again, the hypothalamus and pituitary cycle is really just producing hormones to control the ovarian cycle. The ovarian cycle is there to produce hormones to control the uterine cycle, but also to cause follicle and egg maturation and, ovary and ovulation. And then the uterine cycle is there to provide the endometrial lining and then to complete menstruation if fertilization has not occurred. So looking at that on a timeline, I've broken this up again into the three simultaneous cycles, the hypothalamic pituitary cycle, the ovarian cycle timeline, and the uterine cycle timeline. So I'm going to try to get some purple up here. Um, for the hypothalamic pituitary. If you look here at the bottom on the x-axis, we have days. And we consider day zero in the female cycle to always be the first day of the menstrual period. Menses is the uh, technical name for the menstrual period. And day zero is used as the starting day because that's the easiest day to determine for a woman's cycle. They can always tell you the day they started their menstrual period, even if they're not able to tell you the day that they um, ovulated, which they wouldn't generally know. So the menstrual cycle begins day zero, uh, first day of menses. Um, the menstruation occurs, you know, between three to four to five, up to seven days long. And then the rest of the cycle is then going out to an average of 28 days. That depends from woman to woman. Some women have a 26-day cycle, some have a 30-day cycle, but we're going to average it out as 28. So with that being the timeline, when we go up to the top, we're going to see that we can break it up into two phases. One is the follicular phase and one is the luteal phase. 
and the follicular phase is just that period of time where the follicles are going to be maturing. And the luteal phase is after ovulation. And it's named luteal because that's when you have the corpus luteum, which we'll talk about. So if you look up here in purple, this is where I've drawn out the, the hypothalamic pituitary timeline. So starting at day zero, you've got a low pulse frequency of GnRH. That is causing production of FSH. You can see there's also some LH being produced, but we're talking about relative production. So the FSH is, is what that low GnRH frequency is for. Now you've got, as the timeline goes on, right before ovulation, you've got that increase in GnRH, pulse frequency, so now it's going fast, and that's what triggers LH to be released. That big surge of LH right here is ovulation, going to cause ovulation, and that is then going to be what switches us over to the luteal phase, and our GnRH is going to go back down again and start to get ready for the next menstrual cycle pathway. So that timeline for GnRH, FSH, and LH are really only there so that we get the ovarian cycle to occur. So let's go down now to the ovaries and that ovarian cycle. You can tell I'm still learning how to use my, my new uh, iPad Pro and the pen involved in it. It's my new toy. So we go to the ovarian cycle now. The ovarian cycle got triggered by that FSH. So here's the follicle and here are the hormones that are released from the ovaries. So the follicle within the ovaries um, was immature and it had the little um, egg inside of it, but the egg is and follicle are not mature to be released until you have had FSH um, triggering that. So we have the maturation of the follicle. At the trigger of LH, we have the ovulation of the egg. And then as soon as the egg is ovulated, this tissue of the follicle makes a change. It knows that the egg is gone and it turns into what we call the corpus luteum. And luteum in Latin is yellow and corpus is corpse. So that's the yellow corpse of the follicle. The corpus luteum and the follicle at when it's alive do more than just mature to produce the egg. They're also what is going to be giving off the hormones. So as that, egg, that follicle is maturing, it is producing estrogens. Those estrogens are going up over the time of the cycle until they peak around ovulation. Then they're going to kind of go down, but you're always going to have some amount of estrogen on board. At ovulation, what you see is the main change in our hormones and our sex hormones is going to be that increase in progesterone that's being released. So now the corpus luteum has taken over and it's going to be releasing a lot of progesterone. And that progesterone release and estrogen release were there to impact and guide the uterine cycle. So we had the GnRH, FSH, and LH that were being released in order to produce the ovarian cycle. We had the ovarian cycle releasing estrogens and progesterones in order to guide and produce the uterine cycle. So over here on the side, I'm going to go to that uterine ovarian cycle timeline, and we're going to remember that it matures those follicles and eggs, produces estrogens to control the uterine cycle, stimulates ovulation, produces progesterone to control the uterine cycle, and then after ovulation, and this is an important point, uh, to point out in terms of the timeline, after ovulation at day 14, 
or about day 14. When the corpus luteum starts to die, it's slowly dropping off the progesterone that it makes. So here, I hope this isn't too messy, but the black here is the progesterone. When the ovulation occurred, it's the corpus luteum began making progesterone, but now it starts dying off. And as the corpus luteum is dying off, the progesterone levels go down. If pregnancy occurs, then hormonal signals come back to keep that corpus luteum from dying and keep progesterone levels maintained for a while. If pregnancy doesn't occur, this dying off of the corpus luteum is very consistent and it takes about 14 days exactly. So while women have varying amounts of time in the first half of this cycle, so it could be a woman could have 12 days, could have 16 days between first day of the menstrual period and ovulation, women are very consistent as having 14 days between ovulation and the death of the corpus luteum. What this means is that if you know when ovulation occurred, you can very, very quickly figure out when the corpus luteum is going to die. But women don't, all, don't usually know when ovulation has occurred. Women often, if they're trying to get pregnant or trying to use a rhythm method to not get pregnant, are only going to know the day of their last period. So if they're trying to calculate 14 days in from their last period starting, that's not necessarily going to tell them when ovulation is going to occur because that half of the cycle varies. And it doesn't just vary from woman to woman, it can also vary um, with, for one woman from month to month. So in case no pregnancy, if we back up onto the right side, the corpus luteum is going to die in 14 days. Now, this ovarian cycle was there, again, to mature the follicles, stimulate ovulation, and produce that corpus luteum. But the progesterone and estrogen that were released were there in order to control the uterine cycle. The uterine cycle timeline now is in the blue, and it is going to start here when we talk about menses. We're starting at the first day of menses when we've already got the endometrial lining built up from the previous month. So we're starting with a strong endometrial lining. We just dropped off progesterone at the end of the last month, and estrogen was there to build the lining, progesterone was there to retain it. So because we just dropped off the progesterone from the last month, there's no progesterone left to, re to retain the lining, and the lining is now going to be shed. And that's going to be our menstrual period. Now, after that lining is shed, we're going to start building up a new one. And that's what those estrogens were for in the uterine cycle. So the estrogen is now, as the estrogen goes up, it's building up the uterine lining. And then that uterine lining is going to stay pretty stable after ovulation as the estrogen levels are no longer increasing. It's going to, the endometrial lining is going to stick around because we have progesterone on board. So I'm going to write here, estrogen is building it, progesterone is maintaining it, and if progesterone drops, I'm going to draw this progesterone dropping, then the next month you're going to then shed that lining. So coming to the right side, um, the estrogen is causing a buildup of the lining, the progesterone retains it, and in case of no pregnancy, they're both going to drop and it's the progesterone drop that's going to cause the shedding of the lining. So the basic take home here is uh, that these again are three different cycles. The first cycle is the hypothalamic pituitary. It is only there to control the ovarian cycle. The ovarian cycle is there to mature and release the egg and to control the uterine cycle. 
and the uterine cycle is there to build up the endometrial lining and then shed it if pregnancy doesn't occur. As we'll talk about and as you know from a and estrogen and progesterone have many effects in the body. Um, but as we talk about the menstrual cycle, the effects of estrogen and progesterone that we are caring about are their effects on the endometrium. And the easiest way to remember this is estrogen builds the endometrial lining and progesterone retains it. So if you have low estrogen levels during the month, you won't build as much of an endometrial lining and you may have a very light period. If you have no drop in progesterone at the end of the month, then you would retain that lining and it wouldn't drop down. And as we'll see when we talk about oral contraceptives, we do have progesterone only oral contraceptives that you take for a full 28 days and you never have a week off. And what those are doing is they're keeping that progesterone level straight. So it goes back and it has feedback effects on ovulation. But women who are on these do not usually have a menstrual period because they're never getting a drop in progesterone. So hopefully this will help um, you think about the hypothalamic pituitary, ovarian, and uterine cycles as separate but simultaneous. And then when we talk about intervention at different points in time for fertility treatments, and we talk about the effects of oral contraceptives, and, um, and estrogen and progesterone therapies, you'll be able to see where they fit into these cycles.